knowing and again talking about past experience having been a part of the Lions series in 2009 and I, as much as I tell everyone you know the, the games itself are the most memorable I think the tour really gets made outside of the you know the four lines in which the game gets played and I know 2009 the Lions going into the communities in South Africa and giving back and building fields and donating clothes and making such a massive impact you know to not only an economy to communities was so much more than just the rugby and I know it was unfortunate that the Lions lost but there was a legacy left um, and it was much more than just what happened on the field. And I think that's for me, probably the saddest thing. I think there is an element of the touring fans that maybe takes away from the players' performance, Jamie. You know, I look at 2009, you know, 2013 in Australia, you know, 2017 in, in New Zealand, and just how much of a, a value add that is for the Lions players. And I'll never forget running out onto both Kings Park and Loftus um, in 2009 and thinking, what? A small red than green. Right <laughs> <laughs> like, like an away game. <laughs> are we actually playing in South Africa? Um, yeah. But I really think it's, it's outside of the field that the legacy gets left. And I think for the players, it's yes, this pandemic you know, has turned the world upside down. But I think particularly with something as unique, as rare as a Lions tour, to not have those experiences off the field and to not have communities you know, impacted for, for generations to come is unfortunately sad. So hopefully the, the on-field performances you know, at least leaves us with some you know, some brilliant memories of this tour because you know you got to feel for the players. I wouldn't have coped um, you know, eight weeks in a, in a bubble. Not ideal. Um, Brian, I do want to know who is your starting 15 for the box first test? Um, I want you to chat us through how dangerous each player is because we need the inside scoop on what we should be looking out for in yeah. terms of their individual games. Yeah, so, so starting 15, I honestly don't think we're Jock Ninaba, who is the new Springbok coach who has been appointed for a year already and has not had the privilege to coach the Springbok in a test match. Mm. I don't think he's going to veer too much away from what we saw in 2019 in that, in that World Cup final. So, Billy Leroux, I think at fullback, so I'm going to probably start from back up to the front. Um, you know, Billy's been playing really well over, over in Japan. I just think he brings a level of calmness, a, a very educated left boot um, and I think between Cheslin on the one wing and, and Makazoli on the other who have both been playing really well um, in France and Japan you know uh, respectively just has you know that older head which I think is, is really necessary um, Lucanya Am you know leader of the Sharks and, and playing really you know, really decent rugby with Damon Delendi who has been phenomenal for months to the season I really think he has been a standout in, in a month side that's you know shown some form of revival um, it's great. I actually said in a team, I said with another podcast a few weeks back that I'd have Damien Willemser at 10. That will probably not change because Henry Pollard is back and playing some great rugby for, for Montpellier. He got through 60 minutes. I think he's been back on you know back on the playing field for the last three weeks. Faf de Klerk is an absolute terrier. And I think he is, I want to say, the fire in everything, you know, the, 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 the manner in, in which he's sort of directing that sales Sharks team at the moment and, you know, what he produces on field for the Springboks, you know, since, you know, becoming a box, I think in 2016 or 2017, it's just, just scary. So for me, that backline um, is a backline that is settled. They do know each other from 20, 2019. Again, it's, it's difficult to say, having not played for, together for a year and a half, how they will come together. But I really believe knowing each other as well as they do and, and having gone through that experience will help. Um, then up front, you know, Stephen Kutsoff has, you know, been captaining the Stormers in Rainbow Cup and playing some phenomenal rugby. Hooker's probably the one where I'm undecided. I, I had Bongi Mbunambi in my initial side a few weeks ago, but, you know, Malcolm Marks, you know, is a worthy replacement. Akafana Madva over in, you know, in the UK with Sales Sharks has been playing really well as well. But I'm going to stick with Bongi because I just believe he brings that level of experience. Uh, Franz Malherbe is maybe a few kilograms heavier than what he was in 2019, um, but still someone that has been producing phenomenal rugby for, for the Stormers or Western Province over in South Africa. And then at lock, so we've got Luit Diaga, who I think is injured and probably won't be ready in time, given given the reports. But even Etzebeth also wasn't in my team a few weeks ago because he was also an injury. So I'm going to go with Franco Mostard and even Etzebeth in the lock position. I mean, Eben probably his arms as big as Jamie's head. Not as big as my head. Uh, I, as big I, as my I legs. didn't want to, I didn't <laughs> want to say <laughs> that, but Jamie's head. Um, so, and the guy who, again, you know, is just, he brings a level of 
something um, on when he gets them field. So, so Evan uh, and, and Franco, who's again just a, a workhorse, and then yeah, you know, Lucy's in Sia Kalisi, Peter Steftitoy, and Dwayne Vermeulen. Um, so, bar the lock positions, it's probably exactly what we saw in 2019. And each and every one of those players is honestly playing a, a level of rugby that validates them being selected. So, yeah, that would be my starting starting 15. I know, Brian, tell me, if you could steal one player from the current Lions squad and then add them into your starting South African team, who would you choose and why? Ooh, who would I choose and why? I'm not going to lie to you. I'd, I'd, I'd have to see where I'd put him, but and I know he is a bit of a bolter, but Sam Simmons has been playing phenomenal rugby and I would potentially even move Peter Steph to toy back to lock um, and have a loose trio, you know, with Sam, Dwayne and, and Sia, because I think I mean, that would just be incredible. Like if, I, I don't know if I'd probably play Dwayne, Dwayne at seven, um, seven then and then move Sam to um, Sam to eight, because he's just, he is an incredible rugby player at the moment. Um, and what he's producing for Exeter has been nothing short of phenomenal. Which of the three number 10s do you think would pose the biggest threat to the South Africans that we have on the line squad? So, so I think Owen Farrell will probably be playing most of this two at centre. I, I could be wrong. Um, you know, Owen will probably admit himself he's maybe not at you know the level where he'd want to be and will hopefully get to that level by the time the Lions series happens. But I definitely see him playing more in the centre. So having played against both Finn... Uh, and Dan, I mean, just to take Jamie back to 2015 and, and that World Cup quarterfinal, you know, Dan was just playing phenomenal rugby. Um, and he's probably one of the most <laughs> incredible people to gather their own Gary Owens. I've never seen anyone as good as Dan. He's a 15 in disguise, isn't he? No, it's ridiculous. Like, you, I mean, he must be in like a 90% you know, recovery rate um, when, he, when he puts those up and unders under. So... You know, between Dan and, and Finn, I think, you know, Finn is sometimes someone that you don't know what you're going to get. When he's on point, he is one of the best to watch. Um, but I think, you know, Warren will probably, guess will probably go for Dan, I believe, in, in that starting 10. And again, his skill set, um, you know, particularly in a tactical game where he is so lethal under, you know, his own high ball. Um, you know, I think that would be something that, you know, Jacques Ninamba would definitely be worried about. And Jamie, just to flip that then, who do you reckon that the Lions are worried about coming up against? Well, we've mentioned Chesham Colby. Um, yeah. La Rochelle actually managed to contain him quite well in that Champions Cup final. I don't know if you watched it, Brian. We didn't hear yeah. Chesham Colby's name for about 50 minutes. Yeah, uh, He almost scored that beautiful try off that to prompt break, but they, they just managed to play a game that didn't allow him to get the ball. Um, I think the Lions would be so wary of him. Um, Faf de Klerk, just as a controller, as a tactical kicker, you know, he's the sort of guy that you're in between the two tens on the pitch and he can pick a corner, you know, in, in a flash. He looks up, he looks up, you see him just looking at the back three, he's constantly scanning the back three, isn't he? Just watch him, watch him, yeah. watch him, and then bang. He can, you can just rifle an end of run kick and have you, you know, five meters from your try line. Mm -hmm. So, it's just a back three. I think the way Steve Tandy is going to have to defend it's managing Faf Klerk's kicking game because, you know, it arguably won them a World Cup uh, a few years ago. So, yeah, Faf, Faf to Klerk, Andre Pollard, wrap them in cotton wool if the box have got any chance, I think. I think they're there too. If tactically those guys are on song, the Lions are, are going to have a real tough time. I, I just rate Faf to Klerk. I think he's a fantastic player. And up front, driving malls come in. Uh, it's no surprise what the forwards are going to be defending. No, it's uh, not. leading up, no, it's leading not, up no, to the. Yeah. Uh, I've <laughs> seen the game plan. What they're going to do? They're going to play from their twenty-two. I think Jock's uh, going exactly. to kicking inside their twenty-two. <laughs> yeah, it's just this ability around the corner, like the box. You know, set piece, hit up around the corner, and they come. They come as a three or four. Uh, and if you can't stop that momentum, dead, you're in trouble. So. It's it, it, just those big carriers. Vermeulen is is at the heart of all that. So I'd say those three: Colby, Fafter, Cloak, Dwayne Vermeulen. 